The title of my message is, Are You a Loser? Most people on this earth probably would not consider themselves a loser. But in the end, they are not the judge. God is. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Paul's letting us know that nothing really matters but receiving Christ and living for him and winning souls, because in the end, the winners will be in heaven and the losers will be in hell. And the only way to get to heaven is accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. That is what Jesus explained to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I'm sure, thought that he was a winner and that he was going to heaven. After all, he was a religious leader. There are probably many people today who go to church and have high morals and are good people. But the truth is the truth. And Jesus was giving Nicodemus the truth. In John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We must be born again by accepting Jesus Christ into our hearts. Most people do not realize that they are born into iniquity and that they need a Savior. In Psalms chapter 51, verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That is why Jesus came to this earth and took on a fashion like a man and died on the cross for our sins. To be a winner, you must accept Jesus Christ into your heart. When a person receives Jesus Christ into their heart, they are so excited about receiving Jesus that they go out and tell others how Jesus changed them. At one time, the Apostle Paul was a big loser. And at that time, his name was Saul. He thought he was doing God's work by rounding up Christians so that they could be put to death. He didn't realize that Jesus was the Son of God until he met Jesus on the way to Damascus. When Paul met Jesus, his life changed. He went from being a big loser to a big winner. Later, Paul wrote to Timothy and said in 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus Christ may excuse me, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Paul admits when he was a sinner that he was the chief of sinners. In other words, he was a big loser at that time. Paul knew if he would have died in that condition when he was sinning, he would have went to hell. That's why it's very important for people to know the truth. Now, when I was a sinner, I wasn't rounding up Christians and trying to put them to death, but what I was doing was afflicting my body with alcohol and drugs, and because I was a sinner, I was a big loser. Now, when my wife and I got married, we were both sinners, but two years into the marriage, my wife got saved. She became a winner, but I was still a big loser, not willing to change my ways. At that time, I went my own way and moved 200 miles away and started a business. I thought I could force my wife's hand and make her move away from this church, but that didn't happen. My plan was for her to stay behind keep working to support the business, 
and then join me in six months. But God had a different plan. And six months turned into seven years. During that time, my wife was being blessed in a great way. I was seeing how God had made her a great winner. She would pray and God would give her answers and favor. So I wanted in on it. Before I would go on a sales call, I would call her up and tell her when my appointment was. And my wife, I would ask her to pray for me for that appointment. Sometimes I would call her back just to make sure that she did pray for me. <laughs> my wife and I loved each other very much. And we would talk on the phone every day, and we would try to see each other every other weekend. But even though she loved me, she wouldn't compromise when it came to the things of God. Sometimes I didn't understand, and I would think that she didn't love me. But eventually I realized that she didn't compromise because she did love me. She knew, yes. <laughs> she knew that she had to live her life for Christ, no matter what I chose to do. So she remained a winner so that she could show me the way. If she would come down to visit me on a weekend, she would first go to church on Friday night, then she would drive down on Saturday, leave early Sunday morning, drive three and a half hours back just to make it to the service that morning, Sunday morning. My wife knew that it was important to put God first and to serve him with her whole heart. By her example, I was learning what it was to be a true winner. I was also learning that life was not easy when you go your own way and not put God first. We lived apart for seven years, but during that time, the Lord was dealing with me, teaching me, yes, humbling me. I even made a commitment to read at least one chapter in the Bible every day. And if I missed a day, then I'd read two chapters the next day to make up for it. Even though during this time I was a sinner, if I made God a promise, I stuck with it. Eventually, I had a strong desire to move back home and sell my business. God was working on me. All that hard work, all that dedication to grow my business is what I thought would make me a winner. But in the end, if I would have died in my sins, I would have been a big loser. In Mark, the eighth chapter, the 36th verse, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? It took seven years for the Lord to bring me to the place where he could change my way of thinking. And he made a way for me to make it back home where I belonged. My wife sent up many prayers for me and she fasted many days during this time because she knew if I ever gave my heart to the Lord, I would give him my all. So when I moved back home, she had to be patient with me. She had to show me a lot of love and she had to let the Holy Ghost deal with me. I made another commitment to the Lord to come to Sunday morning services. Even though I made this commitment, I was still not serving the Lord. I was trying to grow into salvation instead of just being born into it. I had given up some of my worldly habits, which was good for my marriage, but I was just a sinner trying to live like a saint. And that still made me a loser in God's eyes. The bottom line is, you can take the man out of sin, but the only one that can take 
the sin out of the man is Jesus Christ. After I read through the entire Bible, my wife gave me one of Reverend Ainsley's giant little books. She started me off with the first book in the Mystery of God series. I was so amazed how much I learned from reading just that one book. And I became hooked, and I wanted to keep reading them in order. The Lord was opening my my eyes to the truth in a way that I never experienced before. Then the day came. When I read, when I was reading one of the giant little books, and conviction fell on me. And with tears flowing in my eyes, I said the sinner's prayer at the end of the book. And I meant it with all my heart. And that was the day when I went from a loser to a winner. Now my name is written in the book of life, the book that lists only winners. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If I did not become born again, my final destination would have been the lake of fire. It's about having the born again experience. In John chapter 3, verse 18, he that believeth on him, meaning Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus made the sacrifice so that anyone could have the opportunity to receive him. Those who believe on Jesus are not condemned, but those who do not believe in Jesus have no redemption from sin. Jesus is the only redeemer, and if it wasn't for him, we'd all be losers. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In the 13th chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus tells a parable about a sower. And in this parable, there are three losers and only one winner. Jesus tells about a sower who sowed seed abundantly. But some of the seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground. There was not much soil, so immediately the the seed sprang up, and the sun scorched it, because it had no root. So it withered away, and some, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But the other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit and increased some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. When a person has the right kind of soil, meaning the right kind of heart, to receive the word of God, they are willing to accept the gospel seed. And that seed will germinate and grow and produce fruit. But as the Lord lets us know in this parable, not everybody has good soil for him to work with. And because of it, they are the losers. The different kind of soil in this parable lets us know that in different conditions of people's hearts. The first part of the parable talks about how the seed landed by the wayside and the birds came and devoured it. Many people listen to the word But it goes in one ear and out the other before it can take root. Their heart is hardened like the wayside, and the truth is snatched away from them just like the birds eating the seed. Jesus talks about others who will receive the word, but the soil was shallow, and the seed fell upon stony places. This type of person will endure for a while, But when trials come their way, they get offended, 
and they don't have any depth in the word, and they end up withering away and losing it all. Next, Jesus talks about the seed is received among thorns. And the person hears the word, but the thorns, meaning the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word right out of their life. There are many ways to become a loser, but there is only one way to become a winner, and that is through Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. In this scripture, Jesus tells about a person receiving the word in their heart and understanding it. The Holy Ghost wants us to understand the word. That is why it's so important after you receive Jesus Christ that you go on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him, meaning Jesus, and the power of his resurrection. Jesus told us that the Holy Ghost would bring power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is to come up is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We are to be witnesses for the Lord and help him bring in this final harvest. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost is going to help us understand the word of God. That's why Jesus said in the parable of the sower, it was important to receive the word and understand it. Jesus goes on to say, which also bears fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. The Holy Ghost is going to give you the fruit of the Spirit to work in your life. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. This fruit will help you win souls. There is nothing greater than helping the Lord change a person from a loser to a winner. But you have to become a winner first before you can help others become a winner. Friend, if your name is not written in the book of life, then you are not a winner and you are in danger of spending all eternity in hell, a place that was made for losers. You can instantly become a winner by giving your heart to Jesus Christ right now. Don't let the devil deceive you into thinking that there's some other way to make it into heaven. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, neither is there salvation any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation, the born-again experience, can only come through the divine blood of Jesus Christ. Friend, this is your opportunity to accept Jesus Christ into your heart to become a winner. Pray with me now and say, Oh God, Save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. 
let's get your miracle for you today. Those of you that are listening by radio, put your hand against the listening device. And those of you that are watching by television, put your hand against my hand on the television screen. This is a point of contact. And we're going to pull down heaven expecting God to move for you. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what their need is. Break their bondage and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement. And always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, friend, I'd like to encourage you to go on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus let the disciples know that it was very important to tarry in the upper room before they went out to spread the gospel. Friend, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost before you can be that great witness. So at this time, all I want you to do is send up those glories right up to heaven, and I'm going to call this great anointing on you and get ready to receive. Lord, Heavenly Father, as I call this great anointing upon them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And friend, just keep on glorifying the Lord with those words glory. And God bless you.